Well, when I think about us here, I really do believe that Jesus is in our midst, and he is calling you by name. He was calling me by name. And all those months when I felt so distant from God and having such a hard time with going to him, he was calling my name. So no matter what your circumstance is, whether it's something that is happening at home right now or whether it's something that's happening on campus, whether it's something from your past that has continued to walk with you or whether it's something that is um, in your future. Because I would love you to keep, to remember that Jesus knows you by name, even for your future. Remember that um, Jesus knows us by name. And as I think about the things I would most want you to do when you're in those spaces, and if you're in that space right now, remember to rest, to take time to step aside from, you know, the rat race that we're on sometimes. Sometimes we're just churning and running and moving from thing to thing, the next thing you need to do. And, and in fact, that's one of my concerns for Westmont. I feel like, and I, and I know, I feel guilty because I know that I'm modeling it for you as well. But there is a, somehow this feeling that we're supposed to just keep racing from one thing to the next. But I want to encourage you, as I'm encouraging myself, to rest, to step aside, to go and sit in the outdoors. You maybe won't be able to go to Hawaii, but look at where we live. Look at what's around us. And that was something that I learned over the summer. It was so easy for me to always think, well, when I'm on vacation, then maybe I can do this. But you know what? We live in a beautiful place. And I began to go and sit in my backyard, much easier to get to than Hawaii, sit on my deck right at the table there, I have a huge oak tree in my backyard, a hammock that hangs under the oak tree, and this feeling of rest, just rest in me, was something that I have found that is a message that I still have resonating in me and the school year has started, which is a good thing because sometimes it gets swept away immediately. But I invite you to find places like that on this campus, at the beach, up in the mountains, a place that you can go that maybe is your spot. In fact, I used to have one when I was a student at Westmont because, you know, I graduated from this place as well and have been so marked by my time at Westmont. But I used to have a space on campus that I would go to, and I'd forgotten about how important a place is. And so I encourage you to find that place. And then when you are there, listen for his voice. Listen for him calling you by name and then choose to respond to it. I would say take any small step you can. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I was feeling guilty that poetry, that Wendell Berry poems, meant more to me than the holy word of God. I mean, you know, that felt a little bit sacrilegious or something. But take the step that you can. Do the thing that begins to open you up to God, and he is going to meet you. There is um, a quote um, by Reuben Alves that Ben has used before, and the quote is, hope is hearing the music of the future. Faith is choosing to dance to it. Hope is hearing the music of the future. Faith is choosing to dance with it. And as we all gathered back on this campus and as the new students arrived, I had such a sense of renewal not just within myself, I saw it in you as well, and I saw it on campus. And I feel that there is a collective something that is happening that is pretty powerful and pretty wonderful. So this is a journey that we're traveling together. The fire was something that happened to all of us. And for those of you that are new, you still see the remnants of it, and you hear it in the stories that are being told. And so this is something that has happened to us individually, but also collectively. And, and we are together seeing the rebirth of this place. And there is something I really believe that God has for us, both individually as we turn and listen to the music again and choose to dance to it, 
and also collectively as a community because I really believe that there was something really powerful that happened to all of us because of what we experienced together. And you know, I, there was a time just a week and a half ago when I really felt that the music was playing. And I don't know if you felt it and heard it in the way that I did, but it was at the communion chapel that we had. And I had the privilege, and I would say it was such a privilege, of being able to help serve communion. And as I was standing on this left side, and students were coming forward, and I was able to look each person in the eye and said, and say, the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. There was something that was so powerful. I mean, I don't know. I, in fact, I get teary just thinking about it again, how true that word is. And each one of you, I kept thinking, oh, God loves you so much. And we are broken people. But he chose to die for us that we might know him in a new way and experience his love and the intimacy that he desires for us. And you know what? The other thing that happened as I kept looking at you, and some of you were people I knew, and some of you I didn't know at all, but I also realized I love you guys so much. And it's such a privilege to be your dean here. There is nothing that I can imagine that is better than that. And so I want you to remember that you are deeply loved by Jesus and also by me. So when the tears began to flow, and um, I was getting a little embarrassed because I'm not someone who is overly emotional, but I couldn't stop the tears as I was giving the bread and saying, the body of Christ broken for you. There was something that was so powerful, and I thought, well, gosh, is this just happening to me? And then at the end, we finished, and Randy Vandermeer was standing by my side, and we looked at each other, and he had tears streaming down his eyes. Then I saw Ben, and Ben had tears running down his eyes, and Alina said she had tears running down her eyes. And I think there was something that was happening, and it was the music. We were hearing the music being played. And so when you hear that music, I invite you to respond to it and then to choose to dance to it because there is something so deep and rich and full that God has for us. And I would like to invite us to step into that space as we start this year. Let me close this in prayer. Oh, sweet Jesus, thank you for how much you love us for the fact that you know our name and that you call us by name and that when we hear our name, we can know you. And Father, we thank you that by your spirit moving in and among us, we can hear the music that is playing. Help us when we hear this music to choose to dance to it. And Lord Jesus, we are so grateful for how much you love us and how much you have given us as we are called to this place for this time to walk this journey together. In your precious name, amen.